Egyptians returned to Tahrir Square a day after former President Hosni Mubarak was sentenced to life in prison, while nearly all those accused with him are acquitted. As Egypt failed to deliver full justice, and could this spark a second revolution? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Well, the verdict is in for a trial that many Egyptians had hoped would bring justice to those killed in last year's uprising that toppled Hosni Mubarak. While the former Egyptian president and his interior minister received life sentences, euphoria soon turned to anger when Mubarak's sons and the other senior officials were all acquitted. Thousands of Egyptian protesters are in Cairo's Tahrir Square protesting the verdicts. All this as Egypt prepares for a runoff vote to elect its next president. Shireen Tadros reports on how current events may affect that vote. The protesters are back in Tahrir Square. And so too are the calls for a revolution. It all started as a spontaneous outburst at a verdict which acquitted Hosni Mubarak's sons and senior police aides. But it soon turned into a political rally. We're here because we feel there's a plan to bring Egypt back to the days of Mubarak. It doesn't matter if it's Mubarak in charge so long as his system stays in place and that can't happen. To think how the whole world watched us fight for our rights in Tahrir Square, where hundreds were killed, but in the end, not a single person was given the death sentence. How? Where is the justice? I came back to Tahrir for our martyrs' rights. What happened yesterday was unacceptable. We are not leaving the square until real justice is served. Two weeks away from a presidential runoff vote, the Muslim Brotherhood is keen to make the most of the moment, pitting their candidate as the revolutionary. This man supports that idea. He says the first round of the election show Mohamed Morsi has popular support. The other argues the turnout was too low to tell. Morsi came to the square on Saturday night. He's promised a retrial of Mubarak's case if he wins the election. His opponent, former Mubarak era Prime Minister Ahmed Shafi, had a very different message. He argues the verdict shows nobody is above the law. Speaking of the Muslim Brotherhood, if Morsi is elected, who will rule Egypt? The leadership of the Muslim Brotherhood. People cannot elect a sham president. I represent a civil state. The Muslim Brotherhood represents backwardness. I represent light. Muslim Brotherhood, darkness and secrets. I represent all of Egypt. They represent an isolated section. As protests continue nationwide, attention is turning to what these events may mean for the upcoming runoff vote in which the liberal young vote may be key. For now, Mohamed Morsi and the Brotherhood are gaining from the protests. But two weeks is a long time in Egyptian politics where momentum swings on an almost daily basis. Shirin Tadros for Inside Story, Cairo. So let's take a closer look then at those verdicts and why they've caused so much anger. Hosni Mubarak was charged with conspiring to kill protesters. He was given a life sentence, but only because the judge ruled that he failed to stop those killings. His former interior minister was convicted of the same charge and also received a life sentence. Mubarak's sons were charged with abusing their influence for personal gain. They were acquitted and a group of interior ministry and police officials were also charged with conspiring to kill protesters. They too were acquitted. Well, Human Rights Watch has welcomed the verdict but slammed the acquittal of Egyptian police officials. In a statement released right after the verdict, it said the acquittal of four assistant ministers of interior on the grounds of insufficient evidence highlights the failure of the prosecution to fully investigate responsibility for the shooting of protesters in January 2011, giving a green light to future police abuse. So is Egypt heading to another revolution? Well, to help us answer this question and more, we're joined by our guests in Cairo, Abdelmagoud Darderi, a member of parliament and a leading member of the Freedom and Justice Party, which is the political arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. Also in Cairo, Abdullah El Ash'al, a professor of international law at the American University and former deputy minister of foreign affairs. 
And in Doha, we're joined by Shadi Hamid, Director of Research at the Brookings Doha Center. Good to have you all with us. Uh, Shadi, if I could start with you. Uh, the general feeling is Mubarak convicted, but the regime acquitted. That's the general sentiment from the protesters who've taken to the streets to vent their anger uh, at these verdicts. Was this a political decision rather than a legal one? Yeah, I think this was a political decision. I mean, the legal grounds for the verdict are pretty shaky. Um, the, the argument is that Mubarak didn't do enough to stop the killings, not that he actually ordered them. And that's, that, that's, not, that's not hard evidence of any direct wrongdoing. So I think that's why a lot of Egyptians are angry about this. They want accountability for the hundreds that were killed in Tahrir Square, but there's still a big question mark. Who ordered the killings? And no one has actually been um, put into prison for those crimes. Do you believe that this is going to lead to a second revolution, as some are calling for? I mean, we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. I think what we're seeing is a very divided populace. And we shouldn't assume that what we see in Cairo is representative of the rest of the country. And I mean, the last year and a half, the revolutionaries have been tarred by the state media, by the ruling military council. So a lot of Egyptians have turned against this idea of constant protests in Tahrir Square. So I think that divide is still going to be present. That said, I do think this benefits the Brotherhood's candidate, Mohamed Morsi, because he needs to be able to move to the center and get revolutionaries, liberals and leftists behind him. And now he's portraying himself as the revolution's candidate. So I think we have a very stark choice now, and it's, it's much more clear today than it was a week ago. It's the member of the old regime, Mubarak's last prime minister, versus someone who's trying to claim the mantle of the revolution. Yeah, I want to put that question to uh, Abdul Mawgood Daderi in just a moment, but I, I, I want to ask you, uh, first of all, I mean, the general feeling is that this was a completely, completely politicized uh, verdict that was meant to calm uh, the masses, but that clearly uh, hasn't happened at this point, has it? No, it has not happened, fortunately enough, because the Egyptians revolted against not Mubarak as a person, but Mubarak as a gang leader. It was against the whole regime. The gang members, unfortunately, are set free, but the gang leader uh, is, is given life imprisonment. And that is not fair for Egypt. Egyptians will not accept this. Egyptians want to still insist a sharp you read Isqat al Nidam. The people need, would like to see the whole regime uh, come down, and this has not come yet. That's why I don't think of what is happening now as a second revolution. I think it is a continuation of the first revolution, and we hope that this continuation will lead to a new president that can cleanse the whole regime from its corruption and from it is a negative attitude towards the Egyptian people. And I see it happening very soon. I am happy that people are in the streets, not only in Tahrir Square, but everywhere. And that's a strong reminder to all of Egyptians that the revolution is still going on, that Egyptians need to continue revolting against any practices uh, belonging to the old regime. And Egyptians will not accept a candidate who belonged to the X regime to become running for the Egyptian, to become an Egyptian president. And that's a fact, a daily fact that we see now in Egypt. Yeah, I, I want to put that uh, point to you further, which was made by uh, Shadi Hamid earlier, that, that your uh, candidate, Mohamed Morsi, who's running in this uh, presidential runoff against uh, Ahmed Shafi later this month, painting him, uh, as you say, as a, as a remnant of the Mubarak regime and, and a return to, to his rule while you're trying to show yourselves uh, as the true revolutionaries here. But ironically, perhaps the anger that these verdicts have sparked could end up uh, benefiting uh, your campaign. No, we're not really trying to look revolutionary. We've been revolutionary from the very beginning. I mean, look at the candidate, Dr. Morsi. He was imprisoned just two days after the revolution and was released by the Egyptian people, not by the Egyptian state. The man was always part of the, this process of changing the Egyptian regime. The man did a lot. The Muslim Brotherhood members did a lot and sacrificed the most during Mubarak's regime. And they are really in a legitimate 
government uh, is stand now. Uh, oh, more than 30,000 of them came to be imprisoned during Mubarak's regime. And I see it as a natural process. I think the Muslim Brotherhood were standing during the whole 30 years against Mubarak. Now the people of Egypt are trying to bring the Mubarak's regime, the whole regime. And that's very important. People thought that they would like me, regime members wanted to play on the short memory of the Egyptians. But Egyptians are new Egyptians. After the revolution, the Egyptians are planning not to allow any more corruption, any more oppression. And they're going to be very conscious from now on. We will welcome a new president that represents the revolution, Dr. Morsi. But we're also sending a strong message to Dr. Morsi. Dr. Morsi, you're serving the interests of the Egyptian people. And we would like you, we we're very happy that Dr. Morsi promised a retrial for this mistrial so that the justice can be served for the Egyptian people. Abdullah Elishel, uh, lawyers for both uh, Mubarak and uh, the victims are saying that the life sentences that were handed down uh, to Mubarak and his interior uh, minister, Habib al-Adli, could easily be appealed. Uh, do you believe that, that that is a strong possibility? Yes, from the legal point, this is very possible. But uh, let me put the whole thing in uh, the overview or the setup of the case in Egypt. Uh, we had a revolution. The revolution is still crying out in the streets. But the regime is entrenched inside the institutions. We have the military council, which is guarding the regime and uh, trying to pretend that it is protecting the revolution. At the same time, it is liquefying the revolution itself and the revolutionary forces. So we have now a very tricky point in Egypt, that the regime is ready to jump over and to bring back the whole process under its control it has all the instruments, all power uh, needs, and I think um, Ahmad Shafiq is representing this critical point in the Egyptian history. So while we're talking about uh, Dr. Morsi as a revolutionary, he is a revolutionary because he had been also a Muslim Brotherhood were with us in the, in the revolution from the 28th of January when they were sure that it is not demonstrators. They, they, we have a revolution. And let me say that very, um, uh, very assuredly that Muslim Brotherhood and the people were together uh, the part of the resolution, uh, revolution. We, without Muslim Brotherhood, the Egyptian people were lacking something to push. And without the people, Muslim Brotherhood, in fact, were imprisoned and were, in fact, in, in hazard under Mubarak. Now, I don't have any doubt at all that Morsi was uh, representing and still representing uh, the revolutionary camp. So in Egypt now, this judgment, which had been rendered in the three parts of judgment, I think this is a part of the whole scenario which had been put by the military council. Because the military council was pushed by the, the people, different waves of revolutions calling for the trial of Mubarak and his regime. But he opted for another medium course to put Mubarak to trial mm -hmm. and to let him quit or to take some uh, forgiveness. So I think that at the end of the day, Mubarak will be forgive, forgiven and wanna, uh, his I, sons will be I free. I want to ask you as well, Abdullah Alishal, about the legal uh, aspects of this. Um, there are many who are saying that the, the legal basis uh, for these verdicts was, was pretty weak. Is that generally your view? Yes, if I were the judge, I would acquit Mubarak and Habib al-Adli. Why? Because of four things which are very technical. First, that the attorney, in fact, was a part of the process. He gave an order to the court to uh, put Mubarak and uh, the others to trial for three cases or three crimes. And the three crimes were very minimal because Mubarak was the head of the state. He had uh, endless powers. He didn't respect any of the provisions of the Constitution and the laws. He was, in fact, a part of the whole plot which is comprising Israel and the United States to kill Egypt and to put Egypt to the minim minimum uh, as a regional power. So Mubarak himself, and uh, you have to read now how the Israelis are celebrating the upcoming of Ahmad Shafiq, 
would be very more precious than Mubarak himself. So I think Mubarak should be put to trial for all the crimes, not only through the revolution, but also over the past 30 years, because he had many crimes, some of them related to the constitution itself, to the institutions, to the, to, yep. to the uh, I, make, making harm to you, the Egyptian I want to ask you as well about one, yeah. of, one of the legal points here and the justifications uh, for, uh, that was given for um, acquitting uh, Mubarak's sons, uh, Gamal and Ala. Now, the, the judge said uh, he cited the statute of, of limitations uh, on their uh, charges, their corruption charges had expired. Basically, that the alleged crimes <laughs> happened too long ago for them to be uh, admissible in this court. Now, I'm not a legal expert, but that does seem like a technical uh, issue that should have been dealt with at the beginning yeah. of the trial rather than being a, a basis for the final verdict. The, yeah, the, the problem started with the attorney himself because he didn't put Gamal and Ala uh, to trial for the political corruption in general because they had corrupted the political life. They had uh, uh, engineered all the aspects of corruption in the economy and they had in fact using the power of their father with another generation like Ahmed Aiz uh, to uh, make some sort of inheritance in Egypt. So Gamal Mubarak himself was accused of preparing for inheriting his father. So all these crimes should be in fact put in consider into consideration and the attorney himself was uh, collaborating with the old regime to hide all the serious things. And this is why Gamal and Ala are there free so as to join the counter-revolution and to fight against Morsi and others. Shadi Hamid, are you concerned about the precedent uh, that these verdicts might set, uh, that the acquittal of the senior police officers specifically, uh, as proof that the old regime uh, is, is still wields influence and, and uh, the, it, the fear that uh, uh, Mubarak as well could be acquitted on appeal and the precedent that this might set uh, for the security forces going forward? Well, yeah, I mean, what I think we have to remember is that the security sector, the Ministry of Interior and also the General Intelligence Directorate are totally unreformed. This bureaucratic structure is still in place. So when people talk about the end of the regime, if you look at the institutional basis of the regime, that's still very much alive. And of course, the military establishment was a key, was really the key backbone of the Mubarak regime for decades. So. In, in some ways, um, we lost a real opportunity with this trial to kind of uncover the past, to hold not just certain individuals or bad apples responsible, but to look at the institutional setup which led to dictatorship. So we haven't done that. So there's still a long way to go, and that's a source of a lot of this anger. What do you do about the Ministry of Interior? What do you do about those senior aides that were acquitted? And in terms of the precedent this sets, um, I mean, we've had people killed in Tahrir Square, not just before the revolution or during it, but also afterwards, the last year and a half. And the question is, who was responsible and will those people be held accountable for their crimes? And up until now, the answer is no. Mohammed, uh, um, Abdul Majoud uh, Darder, your, your candidate, Mohammed Morsi, Morsi has said, uh, as I believe you alluded to earlier, that if he's elected, he will pursue new trials uh, for all of those acquitted but why should anyone believe that given uh, the the very large obstacles that you are clearly uh, up against here in terms of the fact that the uh, the security apparatus is still uh, run by the same uh, people as under the Mubarak regime and also about the suspicions that many people have about the Muslim Brotherhood and their true agenda uh, you see uh, now in Egypt the voice of the people is the voice to be heard. Mohammed Mursi will be representing the Egyptian people and will do whatever it takes to bring justice to the Egyptian people. As a member of the Egyptian parliament of the revolution, what concerns me most is who killed my people. I have to know and the killers have to be brought to justice and justice have to be served. Now, fortunately, we have a candidate who is committing himself to bringing justice to those who lost their sons and daughters. This is not uh, something uh, uh, light. It is something deep in the Egyptian psyche. The Egyptian will 
uh, and the Egyptian determination to live a free life based in the rule of law and based on justice. Mohammed Morsi promised to do this. We will support him. The Egyptian people will support him to do whatever it takes to bring, bring justice and to bring some comfort to the mothers. And imagine when our mothers lose us in what? In a peaceful revolution. We would like to know who killed them. Now Mubarak and Habib al-Adli are in life in prison. Who did? If the court can't, then we need another trial. If we need more evidence, people need to work to bring more evidence so that we bring the killers. The killers have no place to live with the rest of the Egyptians. The real place is in jail, and they have to be put in jail. And we expect Dr. Morsi will do this. He's a man of honor. He's a man who worked very hard for the Egyptian people in all his career, from the time he graduated, I wanna, when he started being a teacher. Yes, all right, go but ahead. I, sorry, I just want to ask you in, in, the, in the time that we have left about uh, the attacks that have been made against uh, the Brotherhood by uh, Ahmed Shafiq. Uh, as you know, he, he gave a, a news uh, conference uh, on Sunday uh, in which he talked about the Muslim Brotherhood, and he said that uh, he represents a civil state while the Muslim Brotherhood represent, represents backwardness. He said uh, that, uh, that he represents That's tolerance, while the Brotherhood <laughs> represents isolation and discrimination. What do you say to all of that? Surprisingly, it is the same Mubarak's language. Mubarak fooled the whole world that the Muslims are terrorists. And this has to come to an end. Look what we did in the revolution. It was the most peaceful revolution ever. Uh, in, in the world in the past 500 years. I mean, the man is still living in the past. Mr. Shafiq really belongs to Mubarak's era, and he really has to go where the Mubarak and his regime will end up going. I think Morsi represents the future. He represents the people of Egypt. He represents the people of the revolution. And most importantly, he represents freedom and justice. Mr. Shafiq represented oppression, represented corruption, represented the dark years, over 30 years of oppression. We were all in prison of Mubarak. Mubarak was the head of the prison. He and his gang, Mr. Shafiq belongs to this gang, and he has to know his place. Dr. Morsi belongs to the people, and the people will elect him as the coming president of Egypt, inshallah, and Egypt will see we will see new Egypt, a new Egypt where justice and freedom and the rule of law for all, everyone, men and women, young, old, Muslims and Christians, we will deal fairly. But those who killed our people need to be punished for what they did. And those who stole our money, the money needs to come back. And those who are still planning to corrupt our future should stop doing this because Egyptians will Shad not allow this to Shadi happen. Hamid, how do you see this playing out uh, over the next couple of weeks as, as we look ahead to those runoff uh, elections uh, later this month? Do you fear that the, the country, country will grow more divisive? Yeah, when we say that, you know, Morsi represents the people, it's very hard to determine that. Um, the Brotherhood has lost quite a bit of support over the last year. And unfortunately, the Brotherhood has made a number of mistakes since the revolution. Um, and being too accommodating towards the ruling military council, alienating liberals and leftists during the parliamentary process and the formation of the constituent assembly. So now the Brotherhood has to prove its credentials. It has to move to the center and try to, uh, and try to make guarantees so that people who have become skeptical of the Brotherhood can, can, can be assured. Uh, so it's not as simple as to say the Brotherhood is with the revolution and Shafi is not. The Brotherhood has to, I, I think now, do a lot more to bring the supporters of Abul Fatuh and Hamdeen Sabahi, the runner-ups in the election, and make guarantees that they're going to govern in an inclusive manner. All right, that's going to have to be the last word. It'll be very interesting to see uh, how uh, this does play out over the next uh, coming weeks and months. Thank you to all three of our guests, though, uh, Abdul Magood uh, Derderi and Abdullah El Ashal in Cairo and Shadi Hamid in Doha. And that's it for, uh, from us. Uh, thank you for watching. Remember, if you want to send us your feedback, you can just email your thoughts to us at InsideStory at aljazeera.net, as always. The latest news is up next. I'm Hazem Seeker. Bye for now.